Well, it just happened. Another conspiracy got ticked off the list today. And yes, I do have a very sore throat um, today. So please excuse my voice because the quaint little town of Oxford, home to Oxford University, one of the most prestigious universities in the world, beautiful architecture throughout the city, has now signed up to become what we know as a smart city, also known as a 15 minute city. Now, this has gone absolutely crazy in the media this last week, and even the police have gotten involved because the councillors of Oxford, and again, I'm gonna, for the skeptics, I'm gonna prove all of this from the government website and the council website. Um, the councillors said that they've been getting all sorts of uh, nasty messages about these lock pause downs. So we're gonna to have to uh, you know, use uh, pauses in between words here. And this has only really come about because the councillor, I guess, wanted to be, you know, get his five minutes of fame and did a Financial Times interview and all this sort of thing, expecting that everyone was behind these cities with zones, what, what some of you may call districts, where you're not allowed to travel out of your zone by car for more than X amount of days per year. So at the moment, it's proposed for 100 days per year where you can go out of your zone in your car. If you have two cars, that means only 50 trips each car. If you have three cars, that means 33 trips. No, this isn't made up. We're gonna go onto the shared screen. I'm gonna show you all of this. So here we go. This was from the oxfordmail.co.uk. Traffic filters will divide city into 15 minute neighborhoods. Roadblocks stopped most motorists from driving through Oxford City Centre will divide the city into six 15-minute neighbourhoods, a county council travel chief has said, and he insisted the controversial plan would go ahead whether people liked it or not. Duncan Enroy, Oxfordshire County Council's Cabinet Member for Travel and Development Strategy, explained the authority's traffic filter proposals in an interview in the Sunday Times. And by the way, if you're thinking, oh, well, this is just one uh, you know, town city of Oxford, I don't even know if it's a town or city now, but if you're just thinking that, no, no, this is one of many of these trials that are due to begin soon. And I've got a couple more examples um, from Australia and a couple of other countries as well. Mr. Enright said, it's about making sure you have the community center, which has all of those essential needs, the bottle of milk, pharmacy, GP, schools, which you need to have a 15 minute neighborhood. But Mr. Enright told the Sunday Times it's going to happen, definitely. The new traffic filters would operate seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. People can drive freely around their own neighborhood and can apply for a permit to drive through the filters and into other neighborhoods for up to 100 days per year. This equates to an average of two days per week. A maximum of three permits a household will be allowed where there are several adults with cars registered to the address. So this all came out just yesterday then. Council staff abused after conspiracy theorists circulate fake news about traffic filters. It's quite an interesting read this actually, because um, we also have this statement here from uh, Oxford City Council, which is pretty much identical. So what the so-called conspiracy theorists said would happen is actually happening. So I don't know how it's being called a, a conspiracy. The wholly incorrect information suggested that the traffic filters measures in Oxford would see parts of the city cut off from each other under a climate lockdown. As well as this, it was said residents would have to ask the council for permission to travel from one area of the city to another, which again is not true. Well, it kind of is, and uh, maybe not the asking permission, but the whole lockdown, the climate lockdown aspect here, it, it kind of is true because what they're doing is restricting your travel by car in order to reduce CO2 and other emissions. So it, it kind of is true. So then we go on to the FAQs here. Will the Oxford traffic filters be physical barriers? No. So they're saying basically because it's not a physical barrier that this is all you know made up and there's nothing to worry about. Well, this is what it is. It's almost the same. Okay, it's not a physical barrier, but they are simply traffic cameras that can read number plates. Okay, seems quite innocent. If a vehicle passes through the filter at certain times of the day, the camera will read the number plate. And if you do not have an exemption or a residence permit, you will receive a fine in the post. Um, okay, that's a bit weird. Have Oxford councils tried to secretly introduce the traffic filters? No. 
The proposals for traffic filters were first consulted on in 2019 and then updated in February 2020. Huh, what was, uh, what was going on in 2019 and you know February 2020? Of course, no one was distracted at all. A large number of changes were made to the scheme as a result of the consultation, including the introduction of 100 day passes for each resident i.e. rather than complete restrictions into different zones. It's a bit like, it reminds me here of like the Hunger Games, you know, the different districts and things like that. So they did this consultation from the 5th of September to the 13th of October 2022, in which 5,700 people responded to the consultation. Now, I tend to know a little bit about these consultations at the moment because I've actually filled in maybe eight or nine in the last three or four months. And what's really interesting is, they never, these councils and governments, whatever, they never tell you the result. They always say it was sent to a third party for you know, independent verification and they analyze it. And, and, and I always you know, would write to them and say, well, can I see the statistics? Because these were multiple choice questions. So surely you will have the numbers there that you know, shows what the respondents said. And they always say, no, 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 you can't, you can't. So ladies and gents, I would strongly suggest you do Freedom of Information Act request and then we'll see what the truth is because they keep saying all the time, oh, it's so crazy, um, it doesn't matter, it's gonna happen anyway. So why the consultation? It's really just smoke and mirrors, that's all it is. So here it is, the responses were analyzed by an independent research company and the feedback received resulted in a number of updates to the scheme. The scheme will be introduced as a trial during which an additional consultation will be carried out to further refine the scheme. A final decision will then be made on whether or not the filters should be permanent. And if you wanna read a little more of this, you can go onto oxford.gov.uk, and this is their uh, Oxford City Council, and you can read a lot more about um, what they've said here in terms of the scheme. Now, another document you might want to look at is Appendix 1, Zero Carbon 2030 Plan. Um, by, again, what a surprise, 2030. We just keep seeing this, this date, this 2030 date. Fourth Carbon Management Plan, 2021 right through to 2030. That reminds me a little bit of, uh, what was that video I did? Oh, oh yeah, here it is. The Great Reset, 2020 to 2027. So you can actually go through and see all of their plans and what they're planning to do, how their investments are going to move forward in order to you know, bring down all of these emissions and what else they're going to be doing. Everything is on their website and it's quite an interesting read if you do like to read a lot of data. Another document that you can read then is this one. It's called letstalk.oxfordshire.gov.uk uh, and it's called Let's Keep Moving Forward. So here were the key dates when they did the consultation, open, close, and then the decision. I would love to see what has caused so much controversy in terms of 5,700 people that responded, as we can see here, because the way they're making it out is that oh, all these people are, you know, crazy nutcases and they've, you know, abused us and whatever else. It's probably not the case. Probably what happened was a lot of people live in these zones, these areas, and they have cars and they drive from one part of Oxford to another, or maybe they go to work or something like that. And they say, hold on, I'm only going to be able to travel 100 days out of the year. That means two days out of the the working week basically. Well, that's just not gonna work for me because I need to drive to work, I need to drive to this area. So I can completely understand a lot of people's frustration over all of this and why people are calling them climate lockdowns because in a way that is what what is being proposed here. They are these lockdown procedures in order to reju you know, reduce CO2 emissions and, and other things. So if you want to know what these 15 minute cities are, this is the city of Melbourne map. Uh, and you can see this is their 20 minute city approach, but it will become 15 minutes later on. So this is their 20 minute neighborhood. And we can see here local schools, lifelong learning opportunities, local playgrounds and parks, green streets and spaces, community gardens, sport and recreation, safe streets and spaces, affordable. And now let me just say one thing on this sport and recreation that's interesting, because when you look at their emission targets, the sport and recreation actually accounted for about 50% 
of gas usage. So they had a target to actually reduce a lot of this down. So that's quite interesting because we actually need a lot of sport and recreation. It's very you know, important for human beings to get active and get fit and get out into uh, nature. So safe streets and spaces. Yeah, good luck with that one. Crime is exploding at the moment. Affordable housing options. How? How on earth are they going to do that? Have you seen the prices of housing and the, and the earnings ratio to buy a house? Uh, ability to age in peace. Housing diversity. OK. Uh, walkability. Safe cycling networks. Local public transport well connected to public transport, jobs and services within the region and local employment opportunities. And then it finishes with local shopping centers and local health facilities and services. I just can't see how they're going to get to this utopian vision they have here. When you have all of these problems, healthcare is suffering really badly, it's overwhelmed. We've got, uh, we definitely don't have safe streets at the moment. Now, some of you might live in safe areas, but a lot of European cities and American cities are definitely not safe right now. Crime is uh, just exploding, just through the roof. So I really do think a lot of this is, is utopian because they're getting a lot of this information from the UN and the WEF. In fact, let's look at that. So I pulled this up. You can find it on the WEF website. It's an entire video on the 15 minute city. Uh, it's called SDIS 21 Sustainable Development Impact Summit. It is worth a watch. It's quite interesting because you know what it is they are creating. And this isn't new. You can go to the WEF website and look, this goes back to 2018. These will be the world's mega cities in 2030. Again, we keep having this date. Now, 2030 is where you will own nothing and be happy. And it all plays into this smart city grid where they say that you know you won't have your own car because there just won't be the resources available for everyone to have a car so you will share vehicles and you'll use public transport and you know the train and the bus and everything will be electric and that's what will get you into the city and if you want anything well then you can rent it and it will fly in by drone or, or whatever else that they're going to do. And don't forget that there's also zones outside of the city, those that got left behind, if you remember that article. And it does remind me of things that I've read before where it talks about the future, how you'll have a, a sort of two class system, those within the city and those that have the uh, what do they call them like the, the mark uh, qr codes and things like that and you can go shopping and all this stuff. i know i'm getting a little dystopian here but it does remind me of this because what are people going to do that don't want to live under a lot of quite you know strict rules within the city well uh, you are going to always have people that want homesteads that want to live um outside of the cities and, and and things like that so how is this going to fit in with this you know, 2030 agenda, I'm really not sure. So these are the mega cities that they are talking about. Uh, and it's just ironic to me to talk about safe, safe cities. What? Los Angeles, LA, Chicago, NYC. Yeah, they're probably some of the least safe cities I've ever been to. Uh, London, Paris. Yeah, um, I wouldn't exactly call them safe. What about, uh, what else did they say? Affordable housing. Really, in any of these cities, I, uh, I don't think so. Good healthcare, again, I just don't see it. I think this is very much a utopian dream. So that is you up to date then on these new smart cities and these 15 minute cities and you know how they're uh, coming together now. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be good for the walk and talk tomorrow. Apart from that, uh, see you then. Take care, God bless.